Welcome to Developing Graphics Frameworks with Python and OpenGL. Part 38, Texture Coordinates. In the last video, we created the Texture class, which can be used to upload texture data to the GPU and stores a reference to the associated texture object. In this video, we're going to talk about texture coordinates, also known as UV coordinates. And they tell us, or they tell the GPU, which points in an image correspond to which vertices of a geometric object. And there's lots of ways you can make this association. So for example, here on the left, this image, I have a sample texture file. Now, texture coordinates range from 0 to 1. The horizontal axis is the U axis, goes from 0 on the left to 1 on the right. The vertical axis is the V axis, going from 0 on the bottom to 1 on the top. So the lower left corner is 0, 0, and the top right corner is 1, 1. So each point in here corresponds to a different pixel. And you can even sample in between pixels, in which case some weighted average calculation will happen, as we talked about in the last video. Now over on the middle and right of this diagram, we have two different triangles. So each triangle is specified by three vertices. And each vertex, remember a vertex is a data structure that contains lots of different fields. For example, a vertex will contain a position at a very minimum. And in the past, we also associated vertex colors with each vertex. Here at each vertex, we'll also associate UV coordinates. So for example, to say if we want to create this triangle in the middle, right, this vertex up here at the top is assigned the UV coordinates 0 0.5, 0 0.5. This point down here on the left, that would be assigned the UV coordinate 0, 0. And this point here on the right would be assigned the UV coordinates 1, 0. However, if you want, you can just as easily map a different part of this image to the triangle. So for example, here, the same bottom two vertices are being used, right? The bottom corner of this triangle is this vertex, and the bottom right corner of this triangle is assigned to this vertex of the image. But now this top point is assigned UV coordinates 0, 1. And so that maps this point of the image to this point on the triangle. And as is the case with all vertex attributes, as they get passed along to the fragment shader, all the values are interpolated. So really, we just need the values at these three corners of a triangle, and then the rest of the UV coordinates are filled in for us by the GPU pipeline. All right, now it's time to talk about specific shapes. We'll start off with the easiest shape, a rectangle. A rectangle is made up of two triangles, and what we'll want to do is associate the entire full image to a rectangle. Now we need to be careful and make sure that we assign texture coordinates in the same order that we assign position coordinates when we set this up. So the texture coordinates will be, say, T0, T1, and T3, T0, T3, and T2. All right, let's head over to Sublime Text, and let's look at our framework in the geometry directory. Let's take a look at rectangle geometry. All right, so previously, we have two attributes associated with each geometry, a vertex position and vertex color. Starting in this video, we're going to add a third attribute, and that's going to be texture coordinates. So let's go ahead and add uh, texture data into this class. So first we need to define those four points uh, T0, T1, T2, and T3. 
Now just to find them on one line, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, zero, zero is bottom left, then one, zero is bottom right, zero, one is top left, and one, one is top right. And similarly to the way we ordered the position, right, P0 is also the bottom left corner, P1 is also the bottom right, P2 is also the top left, and P3 is the top right. So when we create the data for UV coordinates, we want to use the same ordering that we used for the position data. So this will be T0, T1, T3 for that first triangle followed by T0, T3, T2 for the second. Once we have that array of data, we can make a new attribute. So let's do that. Let's say self.attributes vertex UV. This will be a attribute storing VEC2 data it's very important, VEC2, because there's only two components in each vector. And we'll store UV data in that. All right, so that's basically what we're going to do for all the basic geometry classes. It's also implicit, but I'll point it out here, that when we write our shaders, there's going to be a new attribute or invariable called vertex UV. And so the data in this array will be streamed into that variable when we run the shaders later on. All right, so that is the rectangle geometry. Now I'm going to go ahead and actually copy this code right here before I go on to the next class. The next class we're going to talk about is maybe the second most complicated class after rectangles we have boxes. Right, so this is a box and I'm using that same texture from this first slide and applying it to each of the different sides of the boxes. Now when we set up the box geometry class we observed that really a box is six rectangles and so we have the vertex data arranged in the same way. So to set this up in the box geometry class. Again, to make our life a little bit easier, let's go ahead and copy that code here where we initialize the texture vertices and the UV data array. And let's open up the class box geometry. All right, so down here, after setting up color data and position data, I'm gonna paste that code in because we have precisely the same style of texture data. Now, in this case, there is a difference that this would only fill in the UV coordinates for one face. And, as we all know, a box has six faces. So thankfully, there's some great functions you can use in Python. You can actually multiply a list by six, and that'll duplicate the elements within the list six times. And finally, I need to add an attribute here. And here, unlike the rectangle geometry class, we're using that convenient function we added to geometry, add attribute. Again, we're adding a vec2. The variable name will be vertex uv, and we'll put uv data in there. All right, fantastic. It's an excellent start. Next, let's save this. The next shape we're going to take a look at after boxes are polygons. Polygons are flat. That's convenient. And what we'll do in this case, we'll pretend that the polygon is cutting out part of that texture. We won't try to map the entire texture inside of one of these shapes because that doesn't always make sense. So here we have part of the texture applied to a triangle. Here part of the texture is applied to an octagon. And here, I think this is technically 32 sides, but it's close enough that it looks roughly circular. 
right? Now, it turns out that the formula we used when we were creating these polygons, we used the par parametric equations for a circle to generate this vertex data. And that's almost the exact same data that we need for UV coordinates, as we'll see very soon. The difference is that in terms of a circle, uh, the points on a circle go from negative 1 to positive 1 on the x and y axes. We just need to scale that data, so instead of going from negative 1 to positive 1, it goes from 0 to 1 on each axis. So the next addition we're going to make will be in the polygon geometry class. So let's go ahead and open that up. All right, so the changes we're going to make, first, we're going to add a new UV data array. And now, for n in range size, and I'm going to use a formula which is kind of like the one we used for positions. Uh, first, I'll append the UV coordinates at the center. In this case, remember UV coordinates go from 0 to 1. The center coordinates are 0 0.5 comma 0 0.5. The next point, right, I kind of want to append something like this. Except I don't really need radius, so I'll delete that. And the problem with sine and cosine, again, is that they go from negative 1 to 1. And I need to rescale that to the range 0 to 1. So the way I can do that, for negative 1 to 1, that interval has length 2. So I'll multiply that by 0 0.5. Then I need to also shift it to get it into the range 0 to 1. So I'm going to multiply by 0 0.5 and then add 0 0.5. Then for the sine, I'm going to multiply by 0.5 and add 0.5. And UV coordinates are VEC 2s. I don't need that third coordinate at all, so make sure you delete that. And then one more. And so I'll say start off with UV data dot append. Again, it's, it's very similar to this formula, so I'll use that as a starting point except we don't need the radius term. I do need to scale it to the correct range. So each one of these terms is multiplied by 0.5 and add 0.5. Multiply by 0.5 and add 0.5. And of course, we don't need that third coordinate. So once again, let's delete that. And as before, we need to make sure this data gets added to the dictionary of attributes, say vec2, corresponding to a variable that will be named vertex uv, and just put uv data in there. Those are all the changes we need to make to the polygon geometry class. Now we have a lot of other geometric shapes, but you might recall that they're all based off of the parametric geometry class. So for example, here we have a sphere and a cone and a cylinder. On the cylinder, I'm cheating a little bit because I'm also using a polygon geometry as the top lid here. But each one of these different shapes is generated by a function, right? a function with two input variables. And those input variables, we're going to use those as the basis for our UV coordinates. And then eventually, if we apply a texture, that same grid texture, to each one of these shapes, we should get things which look like these three right here. So let's head back over to that class. All right, our last class we're going to modify is parametricgeometry.py. All right, so what I'd like to do here, uh, after positions, we're going to go through a similar process to generate uh, UV coordinates. And so I want UVs right here. 
And while we're appending things right here, we're going to use well, basically a similar process. I'll do this in a separate for loop for, actually I'll copy the first part of this because it's going to be the same. So we need the same number of points. And then what are we going to append to each row? Well, here we have U resolution and V resolution. That's the number of divisions we make along each one of the axes. And U index goes within that range. So for example, uh, we might have U index go from 0 to 10. In that case, to convert those numbers from 0 to 10 into equally spaced numbers between 0 and 1, I can take whatever this index value is and divide it by whatever the resolution is. I don't need to divide it by resolution plus 1 because of the way range works. It doesn't actually generate this final number. It's not inclusive. So here, what I'm going to append is the point u index. Actually, let's make this look exactly like the one before. Uh, here, u is going to equal u index divided by u resolution. v will equal v index divided by v resolution. And then we'll append uv coordinates uv. And that's it. Well, it's not completely it. So once we have that array, Right, then that gives us a row of data, and we'll add that row of data to UVs. Now, this just gives us the UV coordinates at each point in the surface. Remember, just like we did with positions, we had to group that into triangles. So this is our next step in this process. So after we generate all the data for UVs, we need to store it in a format for the vertices. So here, where we store vertex data, let's add another array called UV data, keeping the same structure. And now, in our nested for loop, we have position data and color data. I want to do something similar for texture data. And so to generate UV coordinates, kind of the same idea right here. So I'll actually copy this right here. But instead of P's, maybe I'll call these uh, UV coordinates at each one of these points. So they should get their data from the UVs array. And then once we have that data, we want to add it, again following the same pattern that we use here. Oops. So since this is position data, let's change this to UV data. Let's change each one of these P's to UV. UV. UV, UV, surprisingly tricky, UV. All right, and through that nested for loop, it'll keep adding pairs of triangles until it's gone all the way through the entire grid. You can never forget to add the corresponding attribute. Once again, a vec2 associated to vertex UV, the storing the data in the UV data array. All right, and we'll save that. And those are our four base classes. Everything else can be written in terms of those. So once all of that's finished, then we're done updating the geometries with the necessary data. Uh, the next step is to learn how to use this data in a shader. Right? Our shaders will soon include a vertex UV variable and we'll learn how to sample that data in the next video. Thanks for watching.